God bless you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior and Sender. We bless that wonderful name of him who does things well. Uh, to all of our New Hopians, to all of our friends and family that shares with us each time done this week. And Sender, we thank God for each one of you who thought it not robbery uh, to share with us on uh, this, this day. I said I want to say Happy New Year to each one of you. Uh, uh, that I uh, have not had a chance to uh, say Happy New Year to you. And certainly we thank God that he uh, allowed us to see a brand new, brand new year. And certainly we owe it to him since he saw so fit to allow us to be in this day. We ought to at least uh, give him some praise. We ought to give him some, 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 some thank you. We ought to give him some homage uh, for such a, such a kind and gracious God. I uh, certainly want you to take a moment out uh, and uh, text, call, uh, inbox uh, a fellow uh, member, a church member, uh, uh, call a family friend member, and uh, let them know that uh, this uh, weekly ministry of the New Hope Church is on and that it would do them good, not only on today, uh, but in the days to come. Certainly our prayers goes out to all of our members, those in our church family, uh, those in our community, those throughout this uh, nation, certainly who ask us to pray for them and who on our prayer request list, we certainly are praying for, for you. All bereaved families, certainly we lift you up as well in prayer. Uh, God knows what he does best, even when we don't understand. And so we want to lift up each bereaved family uh, with the, uh, the loss of a loved one, of either family or friend. Certainly we praying uh, for you. Let us pray, gracious and all wise God, our Father, we thank you now uh, for this day. We thank you for another year again that you blessed us to be able to come into your presence. Thank you for the privilege of being able to talk to you. Look on us now, O oh Father, where our oh pity, our oh compassion, forgive us of all of our sins, those of commission and then those of omission. O oh God, continue to uh, own us as your, your children. God, whatever we have done that was not pleasing in your sight, we ask that you will forgive it us now. Father, you said that we confess our sin, you're still faithful, and that you're still just to forgive us. Have mercy on us now, O oh Father. We're praying for mankind everywhere, those, dear God, who stands in the need of a special touch, a special blessing from you. God, we lift them up now. You know who they are, name by name. You know them by condition, by their situation. And we just pray that you just stretch forth your hands not right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are getting ready for our procedures, are those, dear God, that uh, have all you have already brought them to procedure through a surgery. Continue to heal their bodies. Continue to God to calm their bodies and cool their nerves. Touch them and heal them from the inside out and bless them now. God, whatever the pain, whatever the sickness may be, I pray God, whatever that got them out of the disease, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. Bless now. Bless our church family. Bless the whole body of Christ right now. Continue to hold us in your unchanging hand, God. We lift up every church that is open in your name, praying for every pastor, every minister. Bless them right now. Bless their ministry. Give them the strength, to God, to endure and to be able to be uh, committed to the call of the kingdom work. Bless us now. Pray, God, that you will come now in the person of the Holy Spirit. Touch our spiritual ears that we may be able to hear our eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can accept what you have to say to us on this day. We ask you let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our rock. And thank you for being our redeemer. In your sweet son Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen and amen. All right, I want to get right into our uh, study on this week and the next several weeks, beginning of a new year and, and just some things that we want to just put into place and, and to make sure that we start the, the year off right, want to have a better uh, uh, year uh, than we 
perhaps I've had in the past, and the Holy Spirit had led me to this particular topic of dealing with five things that I want to do better in New Year. Say that. Say that. Five things I want to do better in the New Year. All right, say it one more time to yourself. Say, five things I want to do better in the New Year. So we want to uh, just, we want to explore those areas of uh, what we need to do better in the year. And so uh, one of, this is a time of new beginning, a time of reflections, times of evaluation in our lives. Uh, if you have not uh, already set some, set some goals, set some, uh, some reachable, uh, achievable uh, goals in your life that uh, you want to accomplish on the on a on a spiritually uh, aspect, uh, which uh, in in your walk with the Lord, and so um, I want uh, want to focus our uh, attention on uh, Philippians chapter four, uh, Philippians chapter four, verse six. Turn your Bibles there uh, quickly, uh, Philippians chapter four, uh, verse six. I love how the New Living Translation of this particular uh, verse uh, read. And so this uh, verse is going to be uh, the nucleus. It's going to be where we're going to be uh, centered these five things around uh, that we need to, uh, to do, that we, that we need to do, make sure that we do it better in this year. Uh, listen at what he said. Are you there? Verse 6 of the fourth chapter of Philippians. The New Living Translation of the Bible reads, uh, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Uh, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Now, right in that, uh, right in that single verse, there are five things that uh, uh, we need to do that I want to do better in this year. All right, the first thing that we want to do, uh, that I want to do better, and I, and I got them, uh, I want you to kind of uh, repeat after me, is that I don't want to worry about anything. I always say that. I'll, this is what I'm going to do better in the new year. I don't want to worry about anything. All right, now there are some scriptures that I'm going to give you throughout this, uh, this study. But uh, I, want, I want us to uh, know that uh, a worry is, 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 a, is a sickness, it is a, it, is a, a, it is a disease, and one of the saddest things that, um, that, that, that happened, matter of fact, if the truth be told, is that many believers, many Christians spend far too much time Engulf in needless worry. Yeah, we, 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 we worry about this and we worry about that. We worry about, uh, we just worry. We just, and that, and that's, that is a tragedy of us, uh, 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 first of all, uh, attracting this particular disease. And, uh, and we need to um, be aware of worry. And uh, we live in a world that has uh, uh, that consists of a cause and an and a effect. When you do one thing, something else happens because of it. Um, what well, you told my pastor, give you a good example of um, of what I'm talking about is that if we eat right and uh, if we exercise right, it ain't got to do nothing. When we talk about exercise, it ain't got to. Uh, Necessarily mean lifting weights, going to the gym, works out, but but just um, just walking, just causing the body to uh, uh, get in the habit of moving. That if we eat right, if we exercise right, is that um, uh, not only we um, those who uh, uh, goal is to lose weight, but also eating right and 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 um, exercising right is that. It, it, the, the benefits of it, uh, 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 the effect of it, 
is that we can maintain a healthy weight. The cause of eating right and exercising right leads to the effect of what? Losing weight. It, it causes our body uh, 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 to become somewhat healthy. And, uh, and that, when you think about that in, 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 a, in a natural sense, is that um, it also is in regards to uh, our spiritual uh, uh, life or our, our spiritual lifestyle as well. It, it, our, our soul, our soul, look, look, just like our body, natural body, uh, needs a physical uh, uh, food, need, need, need food to survive. So does our spiritual soul, uh, hunger and thirst for, the, uh, for spiritual things. And so uh, one, one of the areas that will uh, affect our spiritual uh, uh, um, um, healthness or our spiritual well-being has to do with that particular uh, our word called worry. And I realize that um, us being human and in this world is that it's easy uh, to uh, slip into a worry mood. Oh, yeah, it's easy to uh, slip into a worry mood. It's easy to uh, contract uh, this uh, disease called worry. Because when we consider what is going on in our world, what is happening is that it causes something internal within us uh, to uh, to worry, and so and so we, we can't spend all of our time uh, listening to constant conversations that is going on uh, in the in the world, especially in the arena of the media. Uh, Sometimes I just don't want to uh, turn on the news. Sometimes I don't even want to uh, 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 know what's all going on all the time that what is dealing within the world in which we live, or because. If we constantly listen to that, and, and is that is that um, that it causes worry, cause anxiety to slip in. It's dealing with when you hear about inflation, when you hear hear about the economy, uh, you hear about the fear of recession, uh, when you hear about these wars that is going on. Uh, when you think about, when you hear about global conflict and gun violence and social uh, issues and political issues and everything else that is 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 entire with this worldly uh, thing is that is that uh, is that we're going to worry. And I must admit that uh, I, you know, uh, I've I've had to listen and I listen. Uh, to these things, but 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 uh, we don't want to carry all of this uh, into a new year. Is that we got to we got we got to learn how to deal with our worry. And 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 keep in mind, worry is not good for you. Worry is not good for you. Uh, says studies have been shown and caused that anxiety and uh and 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 in in a panic mood. Uh, affects our relationship. It affects our sleeping habit. It causes our heart to raise. It causes illness, and and sometimes it it leads to death. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if we if we not if, if we not careful, is that we can uh, allow this um, this sickness to uh, linger. And uh, it, it causes uh, health issues, and and and, uh, and 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 we got to uh, we got we got to be mindful of this this sickness. And I said that uh, uh, many today are suffering from uh, from heart attacks and from strokes, uh, other problems that deals with our body with blood pressure, and. Um, all of this is that folks are in a nervous wreck because of worry. And we got to keep in mind is that, um, you may want to write this down, is that, is that our, our God is bigger than any of our problems. 
Oh, oh you're listening to me. That, I, that our God is bigger than any of our problem. Our, our God is bigger. And we got to stop uh, uh, telling, I think I heard a song a few weeks ago, we got to, we got to, we got to start, uh, stop telling God uh, 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 about our, our mountains and instead telling God we need to tell our mountains about how big our God is. <laughs> Amen. Is that instead of us telling God about our mountains or our problems, what got us uh, uh, in, the, uh, yeah, in the anxiety or the worry mood, is that we got to learn how to tell our problems about how great our God is. And, and I couldn't help, uh, uh, when you turn over into that 43rd chapter of Isaiah, I just said something very, uh, very, very, very needful, uh, and I know, I know Matthew, Jesus talks about um, uh, him taking care, not to worry about our necessities, is that if he take care of the, the fowls, the birds of the air, that if he take care, if he, if he, if he clothes the animals and, and all the, um, the insects, if he take care of the um, of the animals, and, and surely God would take care of us. But in that 43rd chapter of Isaiah, get a, get a chance and, and, and read it when you get a chance. Read it when you, when, uh, when you certainly it'll do you good. The first uh, two verses of that 43rd chapter of uh, Isaiah. Let me read it. I love, I love how the New Living uh, Translation says, uh, are you there? He said, but now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. Underline that word, created you. O Israel, the one who formed you. Underline that, who formed you. Listen to what he says. Uh, Do not be afraid, for I, ha I have ransomed you. Uh, King James used the word, redeem you. I have called you by my name. Underline that. I have called you by my name. And then you ought to get excited with what he says next. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be what? I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulties, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He said, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. Oh, glory. The flames will not consume you. Now, now, I know you said, Pastor, this, this is what uh, God uh, told Isaiah to tell Israel <clears throat> uh, to comfort them, to give them some assurance as what they did with tribulation. But I still, I still believe that, uh, uh, that, that, that these same words that God was, is speaking to us uh, 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 on today. Uh, even though this particular uh, text applies to the children of Israel of yesteryears, is that it still carry contemporary uh, 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 truths and, and, and practical uh, uh, nuggets for us today because we are his, uh, his present uh, children. And, and, and just like Israel was dealing with tribulation as a nation, they, 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 were, they had gone through, they are now going through some perilous time. But God gives them what? A ray of hope. Listen to what he says. He, he says, he said, first of all, he said, I want you to not worry because I created you. You are my child. You are my child. You, you, don't, don't worry. Do not fear anything because you are mine. I'm your father. I'm your dad. I'm going to protect you. That's the first thing. He said, he said, you're mine. You're my child. And then secondly, he said, I redeem you. I brought you with a price that you could not pay. And, what, and, 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 and this is where I got excited at with New Hope. This is what I got excited with, brothers and sisters. Is that, when, is that when I looked at that closely 
is that it tells me that um, that 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 God saw and uh, something He sees something within me that is valuable. Oh Lord, help me. He sees something in me. He saw something. He continues seeing something in me that is valuable. He claims me as being himself. And you ask the question, Pastor, what does he see in me? That when he looks really at me, he don't see me as you and I see each other. And I said this a few weeks ago, is that he don't, he don't look at me as black, as brown. White, yellow. He sees me red. He sees me being covered. He sees me what's in me, which is his son, which is the whole, not only the son, but the Holy Spirit. He sees something valuable in me. And then thirdly, Isaiah says, that he calls us by our name. When you, when you, when you look closely at that, is that this is, this, this is just give me confidence that I got a relationship with him. I know y'all heard that song, He Knows My Name. It's, it's nothing, it's nothing uh, uh, more assurance uh, and when somebody know you by name. God knows us by my name. He don't get all of the billions of peoples in this world. He don't get us mixed up. He knows us individually. He knows us by name. He does not know us casually. But he, he, he knows us in an intimate way. He knows us. He knows every strain of hair that is on our head. If he knows how many grains of sand, is that he knows us. And as this said, not only does he call us by our name, we belong to him. We are his possession. We are his property. We are his prize. That's why we all not be worried. That's why we all not to worry. Because what you what you're saying, Pastor, God got this thing in under control. And that's why Jesus says. In John 16 and 33, in this world, ye shall have tribulation. You're going to have things in this world that is going to cause you to worry. Yeah, the things of this world will cause us to worry. If you doubt my statement, uh, just, 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 uh, just follow what I'm going to tell you, is that you're not going to worry about uh, keeping up maintenance or uh, keeping, uh, having to pay a house, a mortgage, note, or rent. You're not going to worry uh, about any of that if you don't have a house. If you got a house, is that you got to keep up the maintenance of it. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, keeping up the maintenance on your vehicle for putting gas in it, uh, making sure the oil is, uh, is right. You, you don't have to worry about keeping up your vehicle if you don't have one. You don't worry about anybody stealing your money, robbing you, or getting money from you if you don't have any. Or are you listening to me? 
You don't worry about your children when they're not in your presence doing mischievous things or doing uh, uh, something tragically may happen to them. But if you have children, is that every time the phone rang, you're wondering, is it something bad? When they're out late at night, past a certain hour, is they all right? But those things are associated with the world. And as long as you have, as long as we have those things, is that yes, it, 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 it will cause us to worry to the extreme that men do not know how to handle it. And Jesus said in that 33rd verse, I'm going to tell you how to handle it. He said, I have a, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we're not, we're not, we're not having to deal with our worry by ourselves. So read uh, the 46th number of Psalms, verse 1. It teaches us that God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Since he is our refuge, is that we can find protection in him. Since he's our strength, is that we can turn all of our problems over to him. Since he's our present helper, is that we don't have to wait for him to come to me, is that we can know that he's already there with us. So I know the truth of the matter is, is that we just can't stop worrying. We got to learn how to, re to replace it with something else. And that's what I want to deal with next week. Is that since we can't stop worrying, since we're in a world that, that causes anxiety, that causes worry, is that since we can't do it, is that we got to replace it with something else. And that's what I want to leave there with you, is that uh, what can we replace worry with, okay? And so uh, this is what I want to do better in uh, this year of 2024. I don't want to worry about anything. <clears throat> God bless you and God keep you. Is that prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you to God for reminding us that in this world we will have some tribulation. But thank you that through your son Jesus the Christ, is that we already have the victory. We already have the power to overcome. Thank you, dear Father, for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you for this privilege again of being able to talk to you. And God, we're praying that thou will help us now. Thank you for sending our friend, the Holy Spirit, to not only lead but to comfort us. Strengthen us where we're weak and continue to build us where we're spiritually torn down. We ask all these blessings in your son, son Jesus' name. We ask it all. Amen and amen.